Today's competitive world is running faster than ever. Making the right decisions is critical. The rate of change in your ability to respond in the market is fed by data at a rate never seen before. But ask yourself, can you really make those decisions with confidence? Do you have the right knowledge? Can you find the information you need, or is it lost in all of the data? We have seen that top athletes need a strong, flexible backbone to support their performance and coordinate the body. But too much data can cause confusion. Which way should I turn next? Clarifying data and promoting the facts to support the right decision is key. The results depend on that decision. Today, companies are adapting digital strategies to transform their business. The core requirement for digital transformation is the ability to gain timely, actionable insight from connected enterprise applications, including PLM, ERP, manufacturing and in-service systems, as well as data from partners, suppliers, customers, IoT devices and sensors. Such insight needs to tie critical information from the edge to the core, providing a holistic view, enabling timely decisions. At EQ Technologic, we provide that platform. To carry out actions from the insights, organizations require a modern analytics platform coupled with an agile and robust digital backbone. This backbone provides seamless flows of data, ensuring the right information is available in the right applications at the right time. All of this done whilst maintaining the security and business logic engineered into these sources. This digital backbone with actionable insight is unparalleled in the PLM sector. Leveraging your investment in PLM and enterprise systems. Unshackling your knowledge locked up in legacy data systems. EQ Technologic. Better decisions, better quality, better products, faster. Good morning. So yesterday, I started asking everyone who I talked to a simple question. And that was, what has been the best part of the conference for you so far now that we're at the halfway point? And I heard all of the uh, common things like, you know, the people, meeting the people, getting to see customers, or, or meeting the people from Siemens who I work with who I've never had the chance to be face to face. Uh, so a lot of people talked about the sense of community. A lot of people talked about how much they learned in the sessions. They said that they really picked up things that they could take back to work right away. So people really liked the learning. But then one person said something to me, and they said, it's really interesting. They go, you're doing a great job hosting the thing, but you're also doing a really great job coaching the Warriors this season. Apparently, I look like Steve Kerr, according to the person in the bar last night. So we have a great day ahead of us. Again, we're at that halfway point. Again, today at 5 o'clock, we're going to have the prizes from the partners at the booth. Now, how many of you, by a show of hands or a woo, were here yesterday when we gave away prizes at 5 o'clock or in the 5 o'clock hour? So about half of you. So you don't all necessarily know that we gave away some fantastic prizes. We gave away 13 different prizes, all valued at well over $200, $250. It was things like Google Home, uh, Amazon Echoes, Amazon gift certificates. These were great prizes. But the key was you had to be present to win. A lot of you weren't present. So as I started drawing, there was a lot of people not getting $250 prizes. There were 12 people whose names were drawn. It might be you. Maybe your friend stopped you in the hallway and said, you could have had a Best Buy gift certificate. So make sure today that you're here in that five to six o'clock hour, because today I wanna make sure that we give them away. Here's the interesting thing. There were over 200 people who had gotten scanned at the booths, and there were over 2,000 things in the drum. And here was the weird thing. Two different people won two prizes. Out of 13 prizes, two people walked away with two. I wish, there was, I wish there was an engineer in the room who could tell me what that percentage was of that actually happening, because I don't know. It's got to be less than 1% of a chance that two different people would win two prizes with over 200 people in the, in the running. So are you guys ready to get today started? Are you thinking, Tom, shut up and go backstage? Yes, I know you are. So we, you don't have to clap at that. Thanks, John Jarrett. 
<laughs> Yay, go in the back, Tom. Thank you, John. All right, so we're going to start off today with Dinesh Kalatkar. He is the founder, president, and CEO of EQ Technologic, and he is going to talk about eCube and the digital backbone enabling digital transformation. Dinesh? Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> Good morning. How's everybody today? Good. Um, so you saw the subject. I'm going to right, get into it. Many of you know about our company, know about our digital backbone. We have a number of customers across these industries. And if you look at these customers and what they are trying to do, many of them are trying to go towards strategies for sustained competitive advantage. They are looking at things like the digital twin. Of course, we talk a lot about, in, about that in this conference. Uh, it's very real. They are looking at that. They are looking at digital thread. Some of them are looking at this digital shipyard. Uh, smart shoes, as well as autonomous cars or smart cars, number of different things that they are trying to do to gain sustained competitive advantage in the market. Essentially, they are trying to adopt digital transformation to take, it, take their company to the next level. How do you get there from here? So one of the things that you are looking at is that if you look at the life cycle in any company, whether they make shoes or ships or submarines, you know, doesn't matter what they make, this is a very classic life cycle. All of you are aware of that, starting from concept, design, manufacture, build, and sustainment, and retirement of that. That's where this whole concept of ideation, realization, and utilization comes in the picture. And if you look at that, to make it happen, it's not just one system. It's not just PLM systems or ALM systems or ERP systems. It's a number of these systems working together. Many, many, sometimes in large companies, it's hundreds of legacy systems. They are actually you know, working behind the scenes to make that life cycle happen. Uh, with the advent of big data, obviously that customers are now tooling their machines, their factories, going towards smart factories, smart products. Uh, that's what is happening. So a lot of sensors are going on to those products, and they're trying to actually use the big data to give them that kind of a competitive advantage. The key, though, is these systems have to talk to one another. Uh, Tony talked about this, that it's not about software, it's about integration. We absolutely subscribe to that because these systems, including the big data sources, have to, in fact, connect with one another across that patch. And you have to have an integrated systems to move the data as well as information. And that's not enough. You need to have the ability to analyze that, have the augmented analytics pieces in the, in the picture, with big data, you need to do machine learning, artificial intelligence to get the insights that you are looking for so that you have on-demand analytics that can drive decisions. This is kind of the core to help you know, make that digital transformation happen in the company. That is what our platform does. So our EQ platform provides a digital backbone that allows you to actually integrate applications, including big data sources, IoT devices, and things like that and then provide the actionable insight coming on top of that. To make these points, what I want to do is I want to take you through a couple of AVIs really quick. Uh, the first AVI that we will be looking at, where the information is aggregated, we are going to see that information aggregated into Teams Interactive Workspace, but the information is coming from SAP, as well as it's coming from Oracle eBusiness Suite. And I'm trying to make the point of utilization, realization, and ideation coming together. So in this AVI, what we are trying to do is, of course, Team Center is carrying the product structure related information. SAP is providing the data for inventory and cost. And Oracle eBusiness Suite is providing warranty information. So if you are an engineer, you're trying to go through deciding on a change, you want to make sure that the right pieces of information are available for you. And that's the, that's the pieces of the puzzle that we will see. Um, this is what the applications, how they interact with one another. If you look from the top right, where Teams Interactive Workspace is, uh, that's where the thin client is. That's where the messages are passed on to eCube MI. eCube MI has API gateway inside of that. Takes it to eCube MI's proce processes that goes to SAP and Oracle eBusiness Suite and brings back information relevant information in context for that user, so long as that user has access to that information. And that data is then packaged and sent it back to Active Workspace. 
So it's basically doing federated attributes across the whole patch, across that ideation, realization, utilization piece. But it's going to further allow you to actually make changes to that. So user comes in, logs into Team Center Active Workspace, and um, once they go in, so, you know, regular Active Workspace screens, um, navigate the structure, pick the right assembly that they are looking for. Uh, in it is in this case, this is a fuel pump. And um, when you bring that information up, you know, it's a standard thing for Active Workspace, except you would notice there are two tabs at the top, material information and warranty. So that material information that's highlighted, that's coming from SAP, those attributes are not persisted in Team Center at all. They are fetched on the fly, using that user's access privileges to show that. At the bottom, it shows you so many of those attributes that are mashed up together. Now, this piece of it, where now you're allowing that user to make changes to that information. And in this AVI, you'll see this user making changes to description, many different kinds of attributes. The point is, all of this information you see on the screen is coming from SAP in this example. It's mashed up together. It's not persisted in Team Center. It is in context. It's making sure that the access privileges are honored. And they will make a number of different changes that they will make on this form. And once that information is saved here, that information, MI would take that information, take that package, and push that to SAP and update SAP on behalf of that user. The benefits are immense. First is all of this information from coming from your you know, ERP systems and your warranty systems is available to you on the, on the fly. The right window that is just in this ABI, we are trying to show what that information looks like in SAP. So things that are highlighted, it, the information is one and the same. So whatever they changed in Active Workspace, that's the information that got updated inside of SAP. And again, if the user doesn't have the access privileges in SAP, to either see the information or modify that information, they won't be able to do that. There's no coding that's required. That's what the platform does. When you click on the warranty tab, again, the right window is going to show the information coming from Oracle. And it's just going to try and show that whatever information is available for warranty for that particular part or assembly, that information is shown as is, or those attributes are shown as is inside of, um, inside of Team Center. Um, Having this information available, kind of merged together, that's what we were showing on that PowerPoint slide, that you have all these different systems. Information needs to come together, that's one piece. But then the users want to have an ability to change that information, modify it the way that they really want, and push that back out into those applications. And that's what it does. Um, I'm going to go to the second ABI really quick here. And this particular AVI talks about, as you can see the title, in EQ, when we started to work for big data and you know, IoT devices a few years back, we came up with this phrase that our digital backbone allows the customers to go from the edge, where the, the edge devices are or IoT devices are, down to core. And core meaning your on-premises applications like PLM applications, ERP applications. And that's the key. It's not just the sensory data and whether it's going to let you do conditional monitoring and you know, preventative maintenance. Of course, it will let you do that. But the, the real benefits we feel would come when you are able to connect those age devices and bring that information back into your ERP systems as well as your PLM systems. So let's have a look. <clears throat> so what we did is in this ABI, we set up a fictitious company. Uh, they manufacture you know, different kind of bicycles, and they had uh, four bicycles. They put a bunch of sensors on those bicycles, and those uh, pack of four went on different tours in the country, and the sensory data was collected to measure the tire pressures, the chain-related uh, activities, whether the chain is on, not on, the speed, of course, and that's what is happening, as you can see on that picture. Sensory data is coming in. In this example, we took it through Amazon Web Services. MI is able to ingest that data. It's able to deal with streaming data and push that into the system. The user goes in. They go into Active Workspace, look at analytics. The information is now coming from those sensory devices into this system. 
And uh, you know, once you know, once they go and and take a look at that, so these are the four tours that you can see from the west coast to the east coast. Uh, there are different data points that they collected. Obviously, the the temperatures, the topography, and things like that are completely different. That's how those were chosen, and the and the data was captured for all of them. Uh, resume, please. So. Uh, when you go in, you, you take a look at this dashboard. If you look on the top left, and you'll see that, that you know, the major issues that they found was related to low tire pressure. Then, of course, there was things related to brake pads that were heating or chain falling off. And if you look at that kind of uh, yellow, blue, and red colors, they are consistent throughout this dashboard. So on the top right side, you see the four tours the East Coast, you know, going through Pacific and Trans-America Trail, and it tells you number of issues based on that. At the bottom, you will see the, basically the x-axis is the elevation going from about 500 feet to 1,200 plus feet of elevation. The green line shows you the cycle bicycle speed, on average speed. Obviously, it goes down as the elevation increases. And what you're obviously able to surmise here is the speed goes down, elevation increases, and the tire pressure seems to go much lower. Resume, please. So the user is able to drill into that information, and they're able to take a look at what has uh, happened there in terms of the, the tire pressures. And you'll see that the tire pressure is below the lower pressure threshold. So, and this is on that particular Pacific Coast tour. It's because of the elevation was much different. You go to the one with Mississippi River, there's not much elevation difference. The tire pressure seems to be okay between those threshold areas. So the engineers are now trying to figure out what has actually happened. And in this example, what they do is they're bringing in the JTs of that bicycle, as you can see here. And, and what's happening there is we're taking the JT, this is going through eCube's 3D Insight, bring that JT, bring the information for product structure from Team Center, and in that, uh, you know, in that uh, table highlighted there, you'll see again inventory and cost data that is fetched from the ERP systems. So it's mashing that data, it's taking the sensory data, trying to analyze that, getting that with the JT, and presenting that information on the fly. Uh, resume, please. So. They, they take a look at that, and essentially this ABI goes off and, uh, and completes with the person, the engineer trying to create a change request in Team Center. They change the material and, and go from it, all right? So hopefully those two ABIs were able to tie the pieces for you as to how these things uh, fit together, all the way from IoT devices into the core of the systems, as well as making sure that the information is connected across the patch. Um, this, is what the, this is what our platform does. Multiple different uh, systems we connect to. Many, many customers, many of them are here. Many of them are presenting on our behalf. I believe ADN, Dyson, JCB, and uh, Lockheed Aero, they are presenting on our behalf uh, related to this. Um, so that's, that's what we have. And uh, with that, I'll leave you with our company video to watch. Thank you. Today's competitive world is running faster than ever. Making the right decisions is critical. The rate of change in your ability to respond in the market is fed by data at a rate never seen before. But ask yourself, can you really make those decisions with confidence? Do you have the right knowledge? Can you find the information you need or is it lost in all of the data? We have seen that top athletes need a strong, flexible backbone to support their performance and coordinate the body. But too much data can cause confusion. Which way should I turn next? Clarifying data and promoting the facts to support the right decision is key. The results depend on that decision. Today, companies are adapting digital strategies to transform their business. The core requirement for digital transformation is the ability to gain timely, actionable insight from connected enterprise applications, including PLM, ERP, manufacturing and in-service systems, as well as data from partners, suppliers, customers, IoT devices and sensors. Such insight needs to tie critical information from the edge to the core 
providing a holistic view, enabling timely decisions. At EQ Technologic, we provide that platform. To carry out actions from the insights, organizations require a modern analytics platform coupled with an agile and robust digital backbone. This backbone provides seamless flows of data, ensuring the right information is available in the right applications at the right time. All of this done whilst maintaining the security and business logic engineered into these sources. This digital backbone with actionable insight is unparalleled in the PLM sector. Leveraging your investment in PLM and enterprise systems. Unshackling your knowledge locked up in legacy data systems. EQ Technologic. Better decisions, better quality, better products, faster. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. So backstage, Dinesh told me something very interesting about himself. I said, what's something fun about yourself I can share with the audience? And he said, I'm not outdoorsy, but I hiked Mount Kilimanjaro last year because my friends were going. That's kind of cool. <laughs> so.